Today we're taking a look at Britt Marling. We'd like to thank the person who suggested her. It was This was a good one. I hadn't heard of her before. No. And yeah, so it was a great one. So thank you for the to the person who suggested her. Britt Marling is an American actress and screenwriter. She rose to prominence after starring in several films that premiered at the Sundance Film Festival, including Sound of My Voice, Another Earth, and The East, each of which she co-wrote in addition to playing the lead role. She co-created, wrote, and starred in the Netflix series The OA, which debuted in 2016. We also watched another interview with her, um, that off camera with Sam Jones. He's great. Like that's another video you might want to check out because she explains how she started out in investment banking and she was basically dying inside every day in the yeah. corporate kind of environment and how she kind of came to find herself and really her passion in life. And that was a wonderful interview. So you might want to look at that um, if you want to do some extra research on her. So uh, the first question he asks, what her most vivid memory is of childhood. So that's the question that's posed to her. Okay, you ready? Yes, I am. Three, two, one, go. Wow, going deep right from the start, Gregory. It's just going to get deeper from the <laughs> Okay, um, my deepest memory from childhood, most vivid memory. You know, I think... Um, I don't know that this is the earliest memory, but it's the most vivid. It, uh, I moved around a lot as a kid. We, we moved constantly. And uh, I think because of that, I had a sort of um, fragmented childhood. And, and from house to house, there was nothing coherent. It was hard to know what you could take root into. But I, you know, I asked my dad if every time we moved, if we could at least move into neighborhoods with climbing trees or if there could be climbing trees nearby. Um, and he really kept, was good on that promise. And so I think my most vivid early memories are of those trees. Like I remember very specific trees in each town or each city that uh, I would crawl up into the top of. And I don't know, I think I had this sense when I was very young that everything felt very impermanent, but that the trees were more permanent and that they were a kind of access to the ether, but they were also deeply rooted in the ground. Um, so I think something about the saw like the solidity of those branches and feeling held in those spaces when, when the rest of my childhood felt a little, a bit chaotic and disjointed. Um, All right, let's okay. stop there. Stop. What an answer to that question. <laughs> yes. You, this is an Again, intuition. Right. And also, I see T.I. at work because right away she was doing the stalling thing. Wow, Gregory, what a deep question. Like you could tell she, she was <laughs> wow. doing that. Yes. <laughs> I'm actually like, thinking up. <laughs> yeah. Like I think F.E.T.I. people become pretty good at stalling while the mind is desperately trying to think of an answer. <laughs> then I notice as she then starts talking, she gets going and then she starts to really hit her stride. I just see this with F.E.T.I. in conversation. It's just it takes a little bit to get going. And then once you get going, there's an ease in it. So I think it's like slower start. And then once it starts to roll out, where TE doesn't seem to be that way with me. It doesn't seem to like, it, it kind of goes from the beginning. I sort of recognize the answer as being quite effy. Mm. Um, so like you just, like I, I can understand the process. So for instance, she moves around a lot and then she's got this almost like this feeling that uh, there's like more permanency and more roots and foundation in nature. Yeah, mm -hmm. in nature and trees. Like the mm -hmm. trees are there and they've been there for, I don't know, 50 years. It depends, obviously, what tree. <laughs> um, yes. There's like some longevity there and that's the feeling. Yes. And she probably couldn't articulate it at the time, but like she felt good around the trees, right? Yeah. So then she asked, oh, can we be near trees or whatever? And now like 
she's TI'd it and she's articulating it out mm -hmm. here. Just it's just interesting. Yeah, it's so relatable to me because I moved around a lot as a child as well and I would probably could answer it just the same as she did, almost word for word. And I could even tell you the specific tree that meant so much to me as Which I moved from the place to the weeping willow. <laughs> yeah. So just so interesting that this is, we have a similar life experience. I wanted to point something else out too. This INFJ is a bit of a different manifestation. Yes, she is. And, and I'm going to venture a guess and I couldn't prove it unless I could talk to her specifically. I know another INFJ who's very similar to her and we talk about the circumstantial a lot, how circumstances are so important to who a person becomes. I would venture to say that this, that Britt Marling had feeler parents that spoke a certain way. Yeah. Um, yes. And I don't, I'm not sure if it would be FE or FI. I haven't thought this through very much. But I see a difference sometimes in the INFJs that are influenced a lot by feelers from a young age because they have a different sort of language. Yes. Notice she said, it holds space for me. Um, the trees held space. The way she expresses herself, I think it's very different than probably an INFJ who had a strong thinking influence as a child. Like, are you, are you really in this sort of manifestation? I really can see why people would think that she's an iron. Uh -huh. She speaks like an iron FB. She yes. speaks with a sort of like, I don't know, there's a diff there's a flavor, let's say. Right. And iron right. FB is very like, oh, the expanse, the spirit. You know, it's all kind of, <laughs> well, it's if very you any and out mm -hmm. there and it's different. Yeah. Right. Like you, if you would compare her with like Lady Gaga, I think the video that we right. did, yeah. there, you've said it before, there's a very heartfelt way of speaking and I can see how people might get confused. It's but similar. It's really similar. It's, it is. But I think, again, it's because of influences in childhood. I would really do. Also, like she does the same thing with the hands. She's very expressive in the hands and she's like... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just it's the flavor of it, it's so. Yeah. Even the way she like always looks like a way and she's gathering stuff. Like, I think most INFJs don't do that as much and they're more well, active and FE with the people yes, they're talking but, to. But also think, too, she's not actually with this man. This is a video interview. Right. They're, they're not in the same room. And that has a lot to do with it, too. So. All right. Let's keep going. Okay. Go. Cool to me. So lots of, lots of vivid things of, of very specific trees that I still love. That's a great answer. Who were your early influences when you were coming of age as an artist? Wow. Um, you know, I came... I came to art so late. Um, Tell us I, about that, actually that journey for you. I, I studied um, I studied economics in school uh, in college. Part of that, I went to a really big public high school, uh, you know, four thousand kids. I was just trying to find a way to take enough AP classes to like get good grades and you know get into a university. Um, and it wasn't really until I got to Georgetown that. I think because I was an, I declared myself an economics major, I finally gave myself permission to explore the, the art inside. Um, and so I started taking a lot of photography classes at Georgetown um, as all, all my electives. Right, stop and eventually for a second. My dual major. Okay. I gave myself permission to explore. It's just that, wow, the choices of words are word choices. See, that's my. Ti there, her, her, thinking. it's the yeah, it's the backwards thinking, yeah. Uh, her word choices are so interesting. So 
very different than what mine would be. Yeah. And again, I just, yeah. And, but not because that we're not the same type, but I think it's more has to do with the influences, what she felt comfortable with growing up. Yeah. It's like she's definitely learned mm -hmm. to speak from the heart more. Yes. There's, I think it's yeah. definitely like an FI parental culture I think influence there. That's what I think so too. Cause I didn't have that. I mean, one of my parents was FI, but a thinker. So, yeah. And it was the man. Yeah, and it was, right, it was the father, right. All right, let's keep going. Okay, go. And, and I think it was really through, you know, so through that there started to be this burgeoning film movement on campus. I think because my generation went to school right when the first sort of prosumer digital cameras were coming out and you could get a laptop with Final Cut Pro and you could get this software from the digital arts department. And so we all started making these uh, small films. And I saw a small, a short film that my, my best friend, uh, Zalbot Monglidge and uh, Mike Cahill, two other students at Georgetown, I saw a short film they made and I was blown away. And we all started making stuff together. And it was actually Zal who introduced me. Uh, we were gonna make a film together called Bernadette. And he was like, before we watch this, you need to watch these other films as references. And I had never seen movies like this before. Like I came from a pretty sheltered, you know, childhood. All right, stop again. Movies. There you go. But Zol Yeah, I just, I'm seeing the TI so much. It's so funny, I guess. It's so weird when I watch my own type. Like I, like I know immediately, like I can get in her head and know how she's thinking and observe her. And, you know, she said, they introduced me, but then she realized she was getting ahead of herself. So then she had to go back and provide some context. And I know that we do this. INFJs do this all the time. I mean, I find myself doing this when I record my thoughts. I get ahead of myself and then I have to go back and clarify. You know, it's like, oh no, sorry, this is, let me give, let me, let me provide some clarification before I go to the end of this thing. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that she said she was kind of sheltered. Mm -hmm. that's yes. something you could read I into could. a little bit. Right. Okay. Okay. This list of films for me included uh, Red by Krzysztof Kozlowski. I don't know if you've seen this film, I'm sure, yeah. And uh, Double Life of Veronique. And I watched these films and I was blown away. I mean, I can still remember the visceral feeling I had watching Irene Jacob on screen. Oh, it felt to me like she was something beyond even the, an actor. Yeah. All right, stop. Like a, this is like the Effie drama that you just... love, isn't it? The Effie drama? Yeah. So expressive. Physically. That's what I mean. Right. It, yeah. It, it's, yeah. Like all the hands and... Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. It's, I don't know. I'm very curious to see who her parents' types, what I know. her parents' types are. Because I know. It would be interesting to know. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep going. Okay. Can't waste this Good. beautiful expression. Channeling something through her and, and the cinematographer and the score and, you know, the director, they were all there together creating this humming, alive thing that felt... Um, I don't know, Kozlowski feels to me like he can touch on something metaphysical that many of us feel about being alive, but collapses the moment you try to articulate it in language. It's almost like language is too heavy. It's this like thing that kind of weights it down. Um, Sounds like Jay did, it's probably like. Fantastic <laughs> um, But those early movies, Red, Double Life of Red, All right, stop Blue, again. When I saw... uh, I love it. This is so funny because I've been inspired by this kind of INFJ myself with their hand motions. Yeah. I've actually, I've studied it a little bit and I've tried to do it myself. How embarrassing. Um, when I'm reading scripts for my own videos and no one can see me, I'm trying to use my hands more. Yeah, I, I noticed you did it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to bring out my words more. Um, like really use my hands. It's so funny. Oh. It's embarrassing, yeah. but it re it's really amazing how it feels, and it makes my speech more warm, I think. I love it. Huh. And I didn't have, 
yeah, and I never had that influence growing up. I didn't. So this is something I'm kind of learning. But yeah, I I really appreciate this about her. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's different. Yeah, I think we have another INFJ on our list who is similar. We haven't typed her yet. I'll tell you who it is when we're done recording. And I'll I'll be sure to point it out once we get to it. But I think she's a little she's similar to this in a way. So we'll we'll check her out later. But yeah, I just think she, there's just no doubt this woman is intuitive. Yeah, it's almost like her learned sort of expressive right. style makes her seem more intuitive. It's almost like want, it sort of I, sells it. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to say, because of this other INFJ woman that I know who has an INFP influence in her life, a strong right. INFP, I really wonder if these INFJs aren't influenced by INFPs, yeah. either as parents or spouses or something. It does seem something. like it. Cause it I know. You, you, Manifestation-wise, Lady yes. Gaga and her... It's very similar, but like you right. can see the FE at the same time. Yes, and yes. And you can you say, can. no, 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 I'm not falling for mm -hmm. that. That's, that's FE, it's not FI. Right. But you can tell the influence. So I I'm, I'm, would make a guess that um, Britt Marling has been influenced by an INFP. That's just my feeling. Yep. Cause it, and yeah, like, it, I can't prove it, but. It's, it's, she's almost like an adoptive INFP in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is. Yes. Wow. Huh. And you well, know, FETI types do yeah. tend to be very influenced by other people. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, particularly INFJs. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, and it'd be interesting to, to see all the sort of other manifestations. You almost get like a flavour. Um, yes. Of INFJ based on who they're sort of dominant influence has been really. Mm -hmm. And I think even as we age, we still look around and adopt things. You know, like I just said, even me, <laughs> I still, I'm still looking around and adopting certain things as part of my person. I like that. I might try that on and see what happens. I don't know. It's fun. It's like being an actress in some ways. It's just a strange way to go about self-discovery but sometimes you have to put something else on to find out who you are in a way i don't know it's a very strange <laughs> messed up thing but it works <laughs> yeah it's like a, it's almost like epi has to play it does um, yeah play being you know things play to sort of practice and prepare and mm -hmm. yeah it's the same way for fe types they tend to try things on and see how yes. it feels yes well thank you for this great suggestion yes. this was an excellent one it was and i'm yes. definitely going to check out the oa because yes infj and like-mindedness yes the i'm NI sure it's dogs. gonna be excellent 